want to ball. I don't mind. Like, you know, at least you're like accepting of it. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah. If I really was self conscious, I could shave it, but I still would be accepting of it. But then you get like these people that are like, you know, tend to be like politicians, or even in, like in my wife's area of like finance, where then the guys like. No, I'm not going bald, and they comb it in these weird ways to like cover things up. Or, right, so or there was so this governor worse. from Wisconsin who said, "No, once I hit my head on something, and it caused this big scar, and now hair doesn't grow there anymore." See, yeah. Now look up, um, look up online Scott Walker baldness. Scott Walker baldness. Scott Walker baldness. Remind you that it doesn't look too promising from my Yeah, I mean it's not. So like there's these pictures where he's like pretty bald. Hey, what's going on? Uh, this like so look at this. Dude, especially when it's on top, dude. Just, exactly. Are you looking at the one where he's with Obama? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. So then he's like, no, I hit my head once on a cupboard, like, and uh, it's I'm not actually going bald. It's a scar. He looked like a super villain if he were to shave his head. Yeah, exactly. So like, <laughs> dude, like. like I'll look like oh, Austin Powers. Oh, here it is. It's the article on the BBC. So it says, like, bang on head caused baldness. Like, dude, you're going bald. Like, big deal. Uh, well, so it turns out then that someone, they asked, like, a doctor, can that really happen? Um, like, he hit, banged his head on something? Is that what he's trying to say? Yeah, they banged his head and that it caused a permanent bald spot. Like they like sliced that part of his scalp off or something? So then they asked the doctor, and this is what the doctor said. Uh, it would have to be a pretty significant trauma, a severe blow to the head. When it happens, hair is shocked out of the system. Hair will normally grow back, but if the trauma is really severe, uh, it can scar the underlying hair follicles and create lasting damage. Interesting. I feel like he paid the doctor off. It says, I've, and so the doctor then says, I've worked in the field for 20 years and only come across three cases caused by trauma, and only one of those was permanent. Um, it's a bald spot. Big deal. Like, I, mean, I don't give a shit about this thing. And, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Are you going to put that no. For what? Yeah, yeah, we need to talk about that. Yeah, we need to talk about it. 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 Yeah, we need to talk Sorry. So we I'm just gonna ask for Tesla. I'm gonna ask for Mr. B because he sent us an email. Wendell. Wendell. Okay, so we've got. I don't know where everyone is. Let's see if I wait long enough. I wait long enough. Pizza? Yeah. No, I'm listening. No. Yeah, Free so, pizza. Tell you're expiring. Well, you got, you got I want to be, be a content. Oh, I didn't get not be a good accountant. Huh? <laughs> yeah, for whatever that's for, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Talk about the government shutdown. Yes, at least I don't have to talk about that. At least for the next three weeks. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to start. Uh, we'll do the intro speeches. We'll carve it out for after the break. And then um, we do, we'll have a speech for next week, but I'll explain what that all is. It shouldn't be that hard. 
Uh, let's start with news stuff. Um, anyone want to take, you don't have to take notes on this stuff. This is just out of your own interest. Um, I'm going to call my wife. Call me. No, yeah, that's a good thing to do. Uh, don't usually carry my phone with me to class, but then I tried to call it before class. And then, not that I took this very easy. Let's come with me. Well, it did say she called 16 minutes ago. Go to the husband, call. Mm -hmm. Or to show them really whipped or something. Um, okay. So, uh, this first thing I wanted, the, the, the first thing, I, the only thing I really wanted to talk about was the, so today is the last day of January. The amazing thing that happened for the conclusion of this month is that um, the stock market, this was the strongest Gain in the stock market in, a, in the month of January since 1987. It's following on the heels of the December that was the worst since the Great Depression. So this kind of seesaw nature of dramatic decline in one month, dramatic increase in the other, showed a great deal of instability and this idea that like, what is it that's causing this instability. But then what it also did is it made me try to think of what was the best performing stock market last year. Anyway, so there are 94 stock markets around the world. Um, anyone want to take a guess of which stock market performed the best last year anywhere in the world? America. Nope. China? Nope. It's not a developed country. We call it a Transitional or aspirational. Vietnam. Hmm? Vietnam. Vietnam ranks pretty darn close. So it's, it's not number two. It's number three. Maybe number four. But Vietnam would be Vietnam for the longest time was among the, the fastest growing. Transition. Kazakhstan is another one that was for many years among the fastest growing. So typically in that, like Vietnam, Kazakhstan, you have a country that, right, so even in the case of Vietnam, which is technically still a communist country, but embracing the market, where you have this dramatic, like, store of, like, state-owned enterprises that all of a sudden you privatize, and then you're also, all of a sudden, like, you've got this big state company that basically we're going to put up for sale that everyone can buy shares in. Same with Kazakhstan, right? Part of the old Soviet Republic, right? Which then then lots of state properties, then all of a sudden we're um, providing them up. Nope, not Czech. Not Czech oh, Republic. so Kazakhstan is number one? Nope, not number one. Nope, we're still looking for number one. Oh. Starts with a J. Jamaica. Jamaica. Really? Now, what do we know about Jamaica? Do we know anything? So my only notion. We know that us Americans like to assume everyone has an accent. <laughs> so I thought that the only way to really introduce this, and again, this is not, I'm not. Um, you ever seen the movie Shantas? Well, I thought, the only, no, I haven't. And the only thing I could think of movie. when I was trying to think of this beginning, so I started thinking about this lecture on Monday, the Tuesday, today's lecture. And the only thing I can say is, Dude, so today we're going to be talking about the black market and like illegal stuff. It just put me in a bad place. Like, yeah, it's just it so. Right. I mean, you should have like some of you saw me in class on Tuesday, and dude, yeah. it's just dark. Anyway, so I wanted to start it out with something much lighter, which would be uh, Cool Runnings, which would be the only thing that I know about Jamaica. I've never been there. I have no desire to go there. It's not that I dislike the country or I have anything against it. So let's talk about, right, so let's just out of some fun here. We'll see the trailer for, but wait, before we do this, is it, who has not seen Cool Runnings? Oh, wow. Hey, stickers, not even you, huh? Okay. You sagging? You sagging? 
boom. <laughs> Always remember, your bones will not break in a bobsled. <laughs> no, no, they shatter. <laughs> so, who wants it? We're looking for a sponsor for the first Jamaican bobsled team. We're after you remember our accent, our typical Jamaican accent. was to compete in the Olympics. <laughs> but they chose a sport. <laughs> They knew nothing about it. In a climate they had never been. Cold weather endurance is vital to building a successful sled team. Dreadlocks. This is the true story of four unlikely athletes. How about I beat your butt right now? How about I draw a line down the middle of your head so it looks like a butt? Who weren't prepared for what they were about <laughs> yeah, to face. Like it's a beautiful afternoon in Calgary. <laughs> There's a lot more coming up. This whole thing a big joke. I can't get my helmet done. Oh, thanks, God. I don't think it's tension here, guys. Oh, it's just upsetting to us already, man. Well, you're going to have to do this on your own one day. Oh. You have no business here, Jamaica. People are always afraid of what's different. No, 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 no. no. But they found in each other. Do you really expect these Jamaicans to qualify? The courage to give it their all. Not only are they going to qualify, they're going to turn some heads down. Oh. I guess we'll watch the rest of this. And they took the whole world along for the ride. This is part of your dreams. Walt Disney Pictures presents... I am feeling very Olympic today. A story for anyone who dares to stand out in a crowd. I didn't come up here to forget who I am and where I come from. And everyone with the courage... <laughs> to stand up for their dreams. I will let know from you now. When you cross that finish line, where did these guys come from? Jamaica! You'll know. School runnings. So what are we going to name this place? Tallulah. <laughs> Tallulah. That's my mother's name. Mm. I don't know. I actually don't know the reality. Did they actually win? Uh... No, they, they crashed the team. Oh. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I don't think it's going to ruin it for anyone. Well, it's from 1993. It's a, uh, a spiritual win. They didn't actually. Uh, let's see how Jamaican bought, because I, I think they still do it, don't they? Yeah. They must. I mean, they got a lot of money yeah, probably now. Um, let's see. Come on, let's look at the Wikipedia. What does it tell us? Um, so they did. Did they qualify? Or they didn't qualify. Um, well, okay, so this is an odd part about, uh, oh, they qualified for Sochi. Oh, look at that. They had money from a cryptocurrency, huh? How about that for linking up lectures there unintentionally? Wow. Yeah, probably, it looks, yeah. Um, probably did. Let's see. It says is. Still. It is. Introduced as a joke currency. Well, it can't be very good then. Oh, okay. Um, oh, because dog. I get it. Hmm. The doge means? Yeah, doge, dog. Yeah, doge. Yeah, my computer's still working on. Um, <laughs> How much did you get? I don't know. I haven't even checked it. Uh, I just know my computer's really hot. Oh, <laughs> it's been doing it for a week. Um, anyway, it's been on um, running for a whole week. Yeah, it's been yeah, mining away. <laughs> you using your, you paid for the electric. Um, 400 years from now, you should ask me for some money because we'll have 36 million bucks. Well, it no. um, okay, so what do we know about Jamaica? Jamaica then has the fastest growing stock market. Last year, it gained 29% uh, last year in 2018. Um, it is the, there's, 30, if my memory serves me right, there's about 37 companies that are listed on the Jamaican Stock Exchange. The Jamaican Stock Exchange is only open three and a half hours a day. Um, Monday, I don't know. Uh, anyway, you know, I'll go back to our generalizations of what's happening in the other 20 and a half hours a day, right? But for three and a half hours a day, the Jamaican stock market is open. 37 companies have a combined market cap of market capitalization of about $11 billion, which is about the market capitalization of 
uh, Chipotle. Uh, so that would mean that all of the companies listed on the Jamaican Stock Exchange have a value of one pretty big company here in the US. Uh, there is no way for lots of Americans using the American Stock Exchange to buy any of the listed Jamaican stocks, um, which is unusual. So for instance, stocks that are on the Vietnamese Stock Exchange, there's typically an American company that would then say, okay, I'm gonna buy these shares and then I'm gonna create an ETF, an exchange traded fund that just tracks the, the stocks that are listed in the Vietnamese stock exchange or Kazakhstan, right? Because right, then what am I gonna do as an American, right? What am I gonna do? Take my dollars, change them into Vietnamese dong and then buy Vietnamese stocks? No, right? I mean, it's easier for me just to use dollars, pay a fee, right? Hire a fee to an American company that does all the work for me, right? And buys you know, Vietnamese stock exchange. There's no company that has even bothered to do this for Jamaica. Um, and the, the funny thing about it is that Jamaican stocks trade so infrequently that for the most part, many stocks, um, if you were like, for instance, right now, if I, well, not right now, the market is closed, but if tomorrow morning I wanted to buy shares of GE, there's always a seller there willing to sell me their shares of GE, and I am a buyer, right? I mean, the price might really fall or really rise, but there's always an active buyer or seller and the market does a pretty good job. Market mechanisms, meaning the computer infrastructure, does a pretty good job of matching buyers and sellers. Very, 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 very rarely do you find a unmatched trade, a trade that doesn't have a buyer or seller. Um, so much so, and I say this is only an anecdote. Um, some client of my wife's called on like Monday morning at like three in the morning. My wife picks up the phone, you know, like that's what you kind of have to do when you're in that business and all of them need. So she picks up the phone and the client wanted to buy like <laughs> some like 10,000 10, shares of AbbVie. AbbVie is a pharmaceutical company. So she's like, okay. <laughs> she, you know, she's supposed to put in the sale or put in the buy order. But she was so tired. She's, I think she just thought she was doing it in her head, but she actually fell asleep. Oh. So like, um, so then the client called at like 7.30 in the morning. He's like, dude, where's my trade? I placed at two and three in the morning, you know? And I was like, oh. well, she didn't see the display, but she was you know, thinking, oh, what am I gonna do? So she calls up the, the home office and we're like, oh, that's easy. Like at this point, it had actually fallen for a price lower than what the client had tried to get it at. So there was no market difference that she was going to make up. And the co company was like, oh, that's easy. We'll just find some of the shares in our inventory that are priced at about that time and we'll just give her a go. Like, so, right, I mean, we have a very, I use that as a story of, we have a very flush market that has, you know, shares out there, not so much in Jamaica. So Jamaica is a very underdeveloped, um, stock exchange and so undeveloped again that the shares are not trading all the time and that's a big it's the biggest companies that are showing the most outsized gains that it gave it that 28 percent increase so you shouldn't even think of it as everything is really strong and rising 28 percent it's really just one or two of the biggest companies that are rising that are reaching that rate but the reason why I thought any of this was interesting. Um, has anyone here ever been to Jamaica? I've never been to Jamaica. I've never had a desire. Um, oh, I did want to say this. Uh, this was something I, I, I did some research on this this morning. So. The, the only thing I knew about Jamaica besides the movie Cool Runnings was that um, they had received IMF money, International Monetary Fund money, about a decade ago, uh, two, uh, two decades ago. Uh, they were really, really in debt, and they had so much debt that it was hundred, about 150% of their GDP. To put that in perspective, Japan right now has the highest debt as a percent of GDP. They have about 200% of GDP. Um, as their debt. The U.S. has about 100%. So Jamaica was somewhere in the middle here, 150%. But Japan and the U.S. are very different 
countries economically than Jamaica, a really poor country. So much so that just to pay the interest on the debt, Jamaica was devoting half of its government revenue, tax revenue, just to pay the interest. But when you're doing that, the only kind of debt a country can get is junk bonds, right? Which are bonds that basically pay 10% or more as interest. And it's so high because the bondholders don't expect to get paid back in full. They expect that the country is going to go bankrupt and then all the bonds will be wiped out and then the high interest will have been your reward. It turns out that Jamaica was so good at um, paying off its loan, it actually paid it off completely. So it turns out that you would have made more money just buying junk bonds than you would have made playing the Jamaican stock market. I found that interesting. Uh, but there's another thing here that's interesting about this. Um, Uh, this came out like two or three weeks ago, um, and I thought it was really interesting um, is that they made a video. This is from the Bank of Jamaica. Inflation is to the economy what the BSI is to reggae music. <laughs> I think it's, well, anyway, as an economist, I think. Um, <laughs> so, what, um, so, what they're concerned about right now is that inflation is 4% um, in Jamaica right now. So, what they're really concerned about is that inflation is all of a sudden going to take off. So the idea is how do you train, how do you teach people in Jamaica, a, a largely developing country, how do you teach them to be more concerned with um, what the inflation rate is? Apparently in this case, you say that it's a lot like the baseline is to um, reggae music, which I guess has a baseline then. Um, see, which one would you rather watch? This guy or that, right? Um, yeah, so I think there was another one too, um, another video, but I didn't. Um... Guys, probably high. <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh, there you oh, here go. Here we go. Uh, sure, I'll Do you think it. banks are only for some people? The government has established the National Financial Inclusion Council, a process that began in February. Hey, he's got a phone just like me. It's like an SE or a 5. So I'm just like a Jamaican. I think it's like, I think it's like an SE or a 5 that he's got. Is that alligator? Is that alligator? Yes, the Council of Financial Inclusion will improve customer protection. Develop mobile and online payment oh, solutions, the opposite side of the road. solutions for lower income earners, agro financing and assistance for small business entrepreneurs, and more financial education. You can really use the there, huh? It's open to all the Jamaicans seeking to do legitimate business. Every Jamaican deserves this access. Oh, and the more we involve, the better. For more information, contact DOJ at 9324145. Of Jamaica. Um, yeah, anyway, so um, this was the thing I was doing to cheer myself up because uh, otherwise I was in a pretty bad mood earlier. Um, yeah, so here again, here's our, um, the concern here is that uh, they really are concerned about inflation happening in the country, which would then wipe out uh, most of the stock market gains uh, of any kind. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, Jamaica. Let's go visit it. Um, okay, so um, we're going to do the intro speeches uh, after the break because uh, then I'll give you the speech assignment for next week, which will actually take up probably at least half the class. It's not that significant. If you wanted to pair up with someone, you can as well. It doesn't have to be individual, but it's kind of designed to be individual, so if you want to do it by your own, you're absolutely fine. If you really want to do it with someone else, you can do that as well. Um, 
Excellent. Okay. Uh, this week is all about gambling, prostitution, and black markets. Uh, I don't know how we got this. Uh, maybe it was my time. If, if it was, it was, I don't it was know you. Where. You introduced it to churches, actually. Oh, that's right. That, that's right. Because again, I introduced oh, yeah. it because there was that yeah. interesting study. That's right. Um, actually, lower or increases property value. Yeah. yeah. Gambling. See, that stuff is interesting. This just oh, um, what did you do? Oh, it's what I thought people wanted, and I, you know, I didn't know like all these topics. I don't know anything about it until I actually started doing it, um, and I learned something. But and I said this on Tuesday, so if you're hearing this, it's stuck with mine. But again, the guy who wrote. The Man in the High Castle, that's the book that became the movie on Amazon. The guy went through this way. I think he ended up like offing himself or at least not making any more, writing any more books because he did all that like research on the Nazis. He's like, wow, that's really fucked up and like didn't want to do it ever again. That's kind of how I felt after this week. I don't know if I ever off yourself. Please don't you have No, I'm not going to do that. I think you'd all have to get AIDS. In fact, let that be recorded if I should die this semester. Everyone gets an A. Um, okay. Now we got prostitution, black markets, and illegal markets. Um, some of these are pretty innocent markets, right? Like, if I just had my trunk full of cigarettes, um, it turns out that the biggest thing I learned in preparing this lecture is that my notion of Either things are in the black market or not in the black market is actually not an appropriate way to divide the economy. That there's actually four different ways that we can think about how markets are structured outside of the market that we normal, the legal formal market that we deal with. Probably the most innocent of them is just an informal market. So, <laughs> in the first one, in an informal market, we're just talking about, like for instance, my wife got up this morning, I got up this morning, we all left the house by like 8.30, 9 in the morning, and my in-laws take care of our youngest son. So, right, I don't pay them, uh, they don't ask for money, um, they don't get paid any money for doing it. So, the, so that would just be informal, right? It's, Dude, they're my wife's parents, so they're stuck not taking care of their grandkid, right? Um, there's no compensation, there's no payment for it. Um, but what that also means is that because it's informal, like what if my kid like um, gets electrocuted? Well, what am I gonna do? So to my in-laws, right? Or what if my in-laws like get injured themselves taking care of the kid? What are they going to do? File unemployment, right? File for workman's comp, right? They can't. So that's what happens in, right? Or what if the uh, sticker cutting machine, right? What if it ends up cutting you, right? So this is, I mean, right? I mean, in some sense, right? Or wait, it's your, is it your cousin? Or who is it that doesn't want to do the job? Your niece, right? See, so it's an informal, it's not like bad, right? I mean, Sticker cutting? I mean, how's that bad thing, right? Or in this case, watching care, taking care of a grandkid. It's not bad. But its informality obviously causes a problem for those who try to measure the formal economy, how big it is. In an economy like Hawaii, this is actually a pretty big segment of the Hawaiian economy, more so than even on the mainland. Um, Right, like if I asked for advice and said, dude, my car won't start, but it's on E on the gas tank, and you say, dude, go get some gas, right? That would actually be part of the informal market because I didn't pay you for you telling me the advice, the auto repair advice of go get gas, uh, right? Otherwise, I could take them to a car shop, right? Paid a $50 fee, and they would have said, go get gas, right? Um, yeah. Now, there's another side to this. So we're kind of calling this let's call this types of markets as a general. We have the unrecorded types of markets. This is only really important 
when you're talking about a what economists call a transitional economy. So transitional economies are economies that used to be socialist or communist and now are no longer socialist or communist. And when a, when a country is socialist or communist, the idea is that the state owns, or the people, because the people are the state, the state is the people, the state owns all of the corporations, all the manufacturing plants, everything. But then everything is meticulously reported, right? Because the government is the one that's running everything. So the government knows exactly how much is made, how much is made by each employee, how much each consumer is consuming. If I then get rid of my socialist or communist background, and then all of a sudden start saying, you know what? I'm gonna use this fair operating capacity to start making privately consumed goods and operate outside of the socialist communist network, then, um, will be kind of in an unrecorded part of the market. Doesn't mean I'm making bad stuff. I could be making, so the example that I looked at was um, in China, a communist country, um, the biggest baby form, so baby formula, uh, infant formula is slowly starting to take hold in China. Uh, right before it was breast milk, right? But then as more women are working, et cetera, et cetera, um, and are working away from their family, um, especially those who are, have um, migrated from rural regions, then they're having to feed their babies uh, formula. Most of the formula was coming from the Western, the Swiss company, Nestle, but then Chinese companies said, hey, we want a piece of this action. So they started making their own, but it wasn't all sanctioned by the Chinese government because the Chinese government wanted people to still be drinking, right? That babies were drinking breast milk, not formula. But the companies that are trying to earn cash, and, and we know how China is. China is officially communist, like Vietnam, but unofficially seeking market opportunities whenever they arise. So making a baby formula by a company in China, some of them are redirecting their efforts, making this baby formula, but it's not part of the formal state Chinese government production process. Yeah, it's unrecorded. I thought they were straight up capitalistic economy at this point. They are. They are with up to one point, which would be the five-year economic plan then that come out of the um, out of the, um, the central planning party that meets where they, every five years there's a um, an economic plan for the next five years, right? So this has been done now 1979, right? It's kind of the, the year that China begins to embrace the market kind of initiative, but still officially communist, just like Vietnam. Vietnam's probably kind of more or less just copying, right? So Vietnam does this in 94, China does it in 1979, where they don't want to disrupt the political power that comes from being a communist, right? Which is for the Chinese and for the Vietnamese is important, but Economically, dude, everyone suffers under that, right? So Vietnam's tremendous economic growth doesn't happen until the late 90s after the breaking of the stuff. Or in the case of China, not until the 80s, when for the most part again, you drop all this. What would you call this? Well, as a Catholic, we would call this someone who shows up to mass only on Easter and Christmas, right? So that's what we that's what call these comments. Right, exactly, a pretense of Communism, but it's only, it's a name only, right? And it probably isn't going to be only another generation or two until everyone just says, you know, why are we going on with this charade uh, any longer? For the most part. Uh, then we have the unreported. Uh, this one. Uh, again, not necessarily bad. Um, my wife, uh, when she takes her son to get his haircut, she takes um, she takes the she takes Truman. I'm just referring to him as a thing. She takes Truman to go get his haircut from this woman who does it out of her home and takes only cash. Right? We've all done these kind of transactions. Person only takes cash. No receipts, 
not really harming anybody, but what's the intent of it, right? To evade taxes, to evade, in the case of Hawaii, right, avoid licenses, right? I said, hey, let me give you a massage. Can you give me $10, right? Uh, right, that would be illegal in the sense that I have to be licensed to be providing massages and you be paying $10 cash, right? The difference would be is that if I wanted to be formally offered massages, um, right, I would have to have a license and you'd probably be paying like $50 or 60 cents, right? And that's what will sort things out though, right? I'm not going to get the tourist from Waikiki coming for Chinese massages, right? It's going to be <laughs> just in the world seeking my massages. Um, but again, it's largely done to, it doesn't have to be a bad thing, is what I'm saying. Well, this sounds creepy, but right, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could just be me try, right, um, me rolling my own cigarettes and saying, dude, buy Shedding's rolled cigarettes. I was really good at it in college, right? I mean, I'm, I, I'm not a practice, but I can get really good. But again, if I'm just trying to avoid taxes um, or avoid regulations imposed by the state or whatever, then it's just, um, in this case, unreported. Then we get to the much dirtier and much uglier ones. Illegal. Um, dude, it's much broader than I thought it was. Um, so the one thing I kept thinking, of, so again, my, I went to this party once. Yeah, it was probably about five years ago or so. Five or six years ago. It was on the mainland. And in the Midwest, people like to hunt a lot. Now, I'm not a hunter. I, I don't dislike people that hunt, but I don't do it myself. But the idea is that if you are a hunter, pretty soon you get bored of just hunting the same thing, right? Like, I don't know, like, well, in the Midwest, it's deer, right? The people, there's lots of deer. So no one minds it if you start like, you know, shooting any deer. But if you after you shot a few deer, then you're like, dude, this isn't fun anymore. So, um, with my wife's firm, they like send like if, if you're doing your job and you do it well, they um, you you have to go to different places to like sell these bonds or offer equities. And so then they say, oh, just stay a few extra days, bring your family. Right, and you can have fun in this different location. Um, and I guess this guy, one of my wife's colleagues, he went to Africa, was like trying to sell some bonds. This was after Zimbabwe adopted the US dollar larger. So he's trying to sell Zimbabwean bonds. And so then as a hunter, he went on some like crazy like hunting trip and you know, like he had one of these like, you know, whatever, like, you know, skin of some rare. Huh? Yeah, I mean, well, see, that's the thing. It's not against, it probably wasn't against the law in the country he was doing it in, but he shouldn't have been bringing it here, right? I mean, there's probably a U.S. law that would say, dude, you can, like, Uzi, like, you know, zebras in, you know, <laughs> Zimbabwe, but don't bring it back. The idea is that you're not going to want to do it if you can't bring it back, right? Because the hunter would be like, I want to put it on the wall or above my door. Um, I don't know. I just remember seeing that and being like, dude, that kind of sucks. Like, you know, like, I I try to be, like, embracing of people that, like, like this yeah. shit. Because I don't do it, but I can understand that someone might like to do it. And in the case of deer, I wouldn't do it. But, dude, there's a lot of deer around in the Midwest. My car is yeah, one of them. Oh, dude, I should show you that. What? So yeah. back when I lived on the mainland, in the fall of every year, the deer start mating, which means that they're all like running to hook up with each other, like they're jumping around. And they <laughs> obviously don't follow the law, like in terms of crossing the street. So they just like go jump out in front of cars and you don't even see them. So uh, I was minding my own business, driving along from work. It was in November, no, in the mainland. And this is where I used to live. It was like this little thing. But what's great about it is that the day that it happened, um, my uh, that was when Google Maps came driving by my house. So what's great about it is that I can still see my car. So this was a looking across the street. There was like a park and a lake. 
Um, no, wait. Okay, so now we're going to start turning this here. So it's October of 2013, right? Like leaves are changing colors. Deers are hooking up. Okay, we're starting to go. I mean, look at that very nice name, Water Street. Like how, like, okay, here we go. We're still going. <laughs> There's the, like, look at these trees. I mean, you know, like, how great does that look? Now, at this point, October of 2013, my child was um, three months old, four months old. So, dude, a year, this was my one-year anniversary. I had a three-month-old. So, dude, I was, like, piss poor. Like, I didn't have a pot to piss in. Like, that's how poor I was. Like, you know, you put all this money for a wedding and then nine months later you have a kid and then you're three months into that. Oh, dude, the deer hit my car, like jumped in front of my car. And, oh, let's see here. Let me go down the street here a little bit. Oh, dude. Okay, look at oh, this car. So, I don't know. <laughs> so the deer hit right here. Like the deer ran across, hit right here, then ricocheted and hit the back door, <laughs> and then died on the side of the road. This guy, this Midwesterner, comes, shows up like almost like right away in his pickup truck, and he's like, you're going to take that deer? <laughs> you really? Like, the guy wanted it to, like, eat it or do whatever. But, uh, uh, dude, I drove that car for an extra year like that. Oh, oh man. It's I like so that. Yeah, you, like, it went like this, and so the moment, it happened so fast, because you're like, why didn't you just, like, Swerve. It happens so fast because the thing's like wanting to hook up. It's like really moving fast, right? It's like <laughs> bound and so it hit. So the moment it hit here, that's what I was like, oh my god, like screaming. And then I'm like, I see it when it's like flying this way, so I can see it. It's like still. And then it hits right here, and then yeah, hits right here, and then it dies. Um, and I drove it, but, and I drove it for another year. Oh man, is it in shattered? It didn't break any glass, no. Yeah. And in Wisconsin, there's no inspection law, so you can oh, nice. you can get away with driving. So it, like, dragged along the doors? Yeah, they, like, hit right here. This door never opened again. Uh, <laughs> my father and I had to replace the headlight. That was the only thing we had to replace. Oh, and I had to get a new uh, mirror on the side. Wow. Yeah. Years. Never seen yeah, that's all from a deer. Did they do insurance up there? They don't. Uh, I guess if I'd had, like, I don't know, when you own a shitty car, yeah. you probably have like cancer your insurance than I did. Um, no, and yeah, there's nothing. Oh man. I heard like insurance companies would rather you hit a fucking deer than swerve because you're more. Yeah, because you're more likely to, yeah, run this. Accident. Well, if I'd known it was coming, I guess I would have avoided it or swerved. I don't know where I would have been. That's how it ended. Some guy didn't take a picture. It's so sad. It's okay, Bambi deserved it. So, okay, so. Um, I started to make a list here. Um, we can add to this list if we want to. So uh, the first thing I immediately thought of was animals, uh, right? Animals that we shouldn't be hunting, um, right? Like what, let's see, because it's odd, right? So the odd thing about all of this, which is kind of the thing that I guess was kind of made me grumpy too, was all of these, um, especially with the, with, with only with the, especially with the illegal, it's all culturally determined, right? So as I said, dude, I can't, if there was like a zebra walking around outside, I can't shoot it. But if this were Zimbabwe, I could, right? So, uh, right, prostitution is legal in the Netherlands, but it's illegal in Hawaii, right? So marijuana, right? Same thing, right? So all of these categories in number four illegal are culturally, socially determined um, of what is considered a legal transaction or not. Right? I mean, there would have been a time in China or in Vietnam where any market transaction would be illegal, right? And slowly that goes away over time. Um, so animals was one, um, I started making a list. Well, for here, fireworks, I guess. Um, let's see what else I counted here. This is not um, brewing my own liquor and selling it. Um, mm -hmm. Selling cigarettes to those who are under 21. Uh, human trafficking, right? So if I say, dude, you want to buy Truman? Uh, <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> Lottery tickets here, but not in the 49, 48 other states because it's us in Utah. Um, <laughs> body organs in the U.S., but in India, you can buy body organs if you want to. 
uh, prostitution, uh, marijuana, but then again, we get to the culturally determined, federally illegal everywhere, but some states allow it for medicinal purposes, some states don't. Some states allow you to do it recreationally, some states don't allow you to do it at all. Um, right, or in our case, cigarettes here for those who are under 21, but in the in 48 of the other states, you can do it at 18. Uh, New York, that's in New York. Oh, they can't do it anymore. Oh, New York? Uh, yeah, New York State, yeah. Um, money laundering, that'd be another one, right? So if I take your cash and then clean it up and then send it out to the rest of the world. So these markets, these illegal markets, which, so this is the big thing I learned. The big thing I learned is that all of these, technically speaking, are aspects of the black market, but they're not all that bad, right? I mean, if we had to like make a moral judgment on these, I mean, obviously this is gonna be unique to you. You might think all of these are bad, um, right? And then we shouldn't do any of them, but I think your view would be a little extreme, right? I mean, I don't think my grandparents, right? My in-law can care my kid is bad. Um, not really exploiting me. Um, says the master. Yeah. <laughs> right, but I mean, um, in, in some sense, again, these are all black markets, but it's really number four which kind of gets more of the attention because it is so bad. Yeah. Um, like carrying an alien and paying them under the table, would that fall under? Yeah, so that would be, I mean, I guess the best way to call that would be still some form of human trafficking, um, right? That I don't have to bring in someone from a country just to use them for sex purposes, right? I could bring them in to say, I, I just want to keep Miami, mm -hmm. right? I mean, um, is there, is there like a definitive difference between unreported and unreported? Or are they, there's a lot of, yeah, so that, that's a good question. So the, the, the question was, is there a distinct difference between unrecorded and unreported? Um, yeah, really the distinct difference is that you really only, see, for the most part, you only see this as a huge segment in, again, the transitional economies that have some aspect of socialist or communist um, habits and traditions, but the rest of the economy is moving toward the market economy. So you see this a lot in Eastern Europe. You see that a lot in developing Asian countries. Um, the unrecorded. You see this more in the developed countries where they have many more laws and regulations against something, but people still want to do it. So an example of an unreported one, well, that was, this was another one, is illegal versus unreported. So apparently it is illegal in Hawaii to have a big sale. Wait, they do that all the time. Though. But it's but it's apparently illegal in Hawaii to have um, like if I made like 20 pies and I offered to sell you a pie. Apparently it's illegal because I have to have a license to collect the tax and I have to have a health inspection and I have to be certified. So it's the same thing for like lemonade stands. So apparently kids in some states can't do lemonade stands. I don't know if that's here in Hawaii, but in some states kids can't do lemonade stands. There was that video of the lady with the Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well, not well, apparently, um, but again, right, what do we call, so then in that case, what do we call that? I mean, technically speaking, um, in Hawaii, the bake sale would be illegal, but what do we think is going on with bake sales in the other countries, the, or the other states? Do we think they're actually paying taxes? No, it's probably just unreported. Now, but again, this kind of raises the difference, right, is, is that activity of having a bake sale? whether it be unrecorded, informal, unreported, illegal, does it really make a difference? I mean, there could be the, the guilt that comes from doing something illegal, but I've never paid, my in-laws make every meal for me, I've never paid them for a meal. Um, it is informal, but, right, I mean, it's not, maybe I am exploiting it. But, um, but, so like the big things though really are like, I mean, if we think of things where if we think of the extremes, it's pretty easy to see why there's a lot of bad aspects to number four. And the bad parts to number four would be the big ones, which would be human trafficking, prostitution, drugs. I think those are kind of the big 
three. And I'm not talking marijuana. I'm talking like crystal meth and heroin, like heroin crack cocaine, opioids, right? Like really hardcore shit that probably shouldn't be messed up, you know, getting messed up with. Um, me rolling my own cigarettes and selling them to you, eh, marijuana, eh. I mean, again, right? I mean, we all know some people that are like, no, that's illegal, you shouldn't do it, but, um, but what I thought was interesting about this was the guy I know. Uh, I probably have mentioned this to many of you, but, Oh, hey, Johnny, what's the use of banning fireworks if everyone just keeps doing it here? It That's a good question. Uh, the smoke <laughs> levels help that more, but now they're just the irritating fireworks. But think of what happened. So the problem when you make something illegal is that it, for the most part, doesn't stop people from doing it. Especially when laws. So all that it does it goes from either the formal market directly to illegal and you would then say okay so now fireworks are illegal here well how are they getting here let's think about let's talk about how are they getting here are they coming in on plane probably not right i mean that'd be very dangerous and probably someone would find it right i mean they go through exit so we know they're all coming in on shipping containers it's not that hard i mean not all shipping containers obviously get inspected and you know, 40 foot containers, how are you gonna inspect? It's, it's all random, right? I mean, you just say, I wanna look in that one. I wanna look in this one. Well, this is from the American Firework Company. Okay, let's go look in that one, right? I mean, they're not gonna be that obvious, but you, you know, so but what happens then, right? Is that if everything then becomes, so on the mainland, you go buy fireworks, you go to Walmart and they're pretty low grade standard fireworks, nothing like that exciting, but here, Fireworks seem so much more intense. Like people are buying some like crazy big ones, right? And because it's because then if it's illegal, it's like, dude, why don't you get the really big ones, right? I mean, right? Or or you're like talking to some guy over in the industrial park and say, hey, you got some fireworks? And the guy's like, yeah, I got some fireworks, right? I mean, and you know nothing about the quality. There's not. I mean, so that's what happens when you push things underground, like in the drug trade, right? I mean, we always hear of like bad drugs right that i mean yeah of course you're going to get bad crystal meth if right people are making it and there's no quality assurance and etc 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 um this is the guy you know listen to it. so this guy um ty he's the um he's the guy i know that's involved in um the medical marijuana um at the time he was COO, but now he is CEO. He's a nice guy. His kids are really annoying, but he's a nice guy. Um, well, he had twins, and I think the twins just made him. I think that yeah, maybe the, the twins made him smoke weed. Yeah, no. When you talk to him, I don't know. There's a certain level, even though you would look at me and say, "Wow, shit, you're really immature." There's a certain level of maturity you gain when you have a kid for the most part, most of the time. And he hasn't gotten that yet. So that's his only annoying characteristic. Um, but he looks happy and he's in the New York Times. So maybe he's, he knows what he's doing. Uh, anyway, um, his problem, which is interesting, is this is the interesting dilemma that starts to happen here. How do you deal with a federally illegal activity, which is selling marijuana, but legal here in the state of Hawaii, he's selling it for medical purposes, People have a right, people have a medical card that says they have to get it, they're paying for it. And how are they paying for it? Cash. Yep, and they have to use cash because no bank is allowed to um, do business basically with Aloha Green, the apothecary, uh, with the medical marijuana company. Because in this case, federal banking laws say, dude, you can't be doing anything illegal on a federal level and be using the banking system to do it. It's one way to make it annoying to do something illegal, right? So, you know, of course, it would be a lot easier for Ty if he could uh, accept credit card payments and if he could pay his employees with formal paychecks, like checks. So we can't do any of that shit. 
he actually pays his employees in cash. He has to accept payments from employees or from customers in cash. But because he's legal from a state perspective, that means he has to actually pay the state excise tax. So this is a story where then basically what he has to do is like, I think it's like once a week or so, he has to like gather all the cash together, <laughs> the tax payment, and then physically walk it to the uh, to the state, you know, to the um, state tax revenue office. Um, yeah. So again. Um, so again, you can't do things like this, use the electronic federal tax payment system. Um, <coughs> and I think he said... So um, I went to... Uh, have you gone to one of these? Washington State. Okay. They totally took my... Uh, they took, did they take credit card? Did they do it through like Square or... Washington State. So, so how did they how did they take it? So they it wasn't like through was it like through one of those where you sometimes you know when you go to a restaurant and they've got the one that's like connected to like an iPad? Was it like one of those kind or was it like a legit? Like a legit. Oh, I don't know what they were. When was this? I was saying like two years ago. Hmm. So maybe so there is a credit. So this was the thing I learned from this article was that there was a credit union in Colorado that does, um, I wonder how they were doing that. Hmm. Let's take a field trip. Um, so sure. maybe what they were doing though, they weren't supposed to be doing because Visa and MasterCard and American Express have then also said, dude, we don't want the government grumpy at us about this. So they don't, they basically don't allow you to do it. Like if you wanted to make an electronic payment so this has been the one like if you use can pay which is like some like basically etf kind of um not etf i'm sorry ach you know how like on your paycheck how you get a digital paycheck it's done through something called the ach automated clearinghouse this is like an ach kind of thing um do you remember what the name of it was no oh, okay i just think this is funny mr chang that's the guy i know Says he wants to operate like any business. So he studied the government building different entrances and exits and shows up at different times and days to make himself less of a robbery target. And then she said, dude, there hasn't been anything that's been happening. That just makes him sound like a crazy guy. Yeah, dude. I mean, I would. I don't know if I'd look at all the different entrances and exits, though. I just hire a big Samoan just to like walk in front of me, right? Or some, I mean, some scary guy, right? I mean, uh, uh, maybe that's why I don't run a, a medical marijuana like, place. The better question is, is he going in through the exits? That makes me even more. Well, maybe he just wants to make sure no one's walking around. Uh, no, who knows? Um, so. What we know from these types of markets then is that cash is the primary thing that drives all of these things. And on a worldwide basis, the US dollar is the worldwide currency, although the euro is almost as strong. Which then means that if you're an economist and you actually want to measure how big are, are these markets, you can actually somewhat determine this by where's the cash going. Now, the government doesn't keep track of, despite what probably rumors on the internet are, there is no, they do not track the serial numbers for people and where things are going. Um, you know, I mean, unless you're like a mobster and the government knows to track your serial numbers, for the most part, not going to be But we can get some pretty good statistical techniques to figure out how much, how fast currency is being used, how often it's trading during the year, how often it's circulating during the year, and trying to figure out how is it being used. Um, in a fashion that it shouldn't be. Um, so it turns out that the estimate is, um, I wrote this down here at some point, that we're talking about for the US economy that all four of these kinds of markets um, add up to be about 15 to 20% of the US economy is in one of these four categories. Not all the illegal stuff, right? It's again, it's things like my in-laws taking care of my kid, all the way down to zebras right, on my wall. 
Um, yeah. So that was the other thing. Um, prostitution is the other one that obviously we look at a lot here because it's kind of exciting when you think about like illegal markets and you think of like undersided things. So this is the fact that uh, some of you have heard this already. A pimp in Atlanta makes on average 40k a week. I wouldn't doubt So that. apparently, and this is what I love, so apparently Atlanta is the uh, biggest, um, the, the, it's where the most prostitution activity they think happens. Obviously, it's they think because no one knows for certain. But um, that people think that Atlanta is right now is the biggest city where prostitution is happening. So, um, so it's obviously so. That's so it's interesting actually. So it so prostitution usually centers around either where military bases are, both in the U.S. and abroad. Um, it centers around um, where big political conventions are going to occur. So it's certainly the case that when the Democrats and the Republicans meet every four years for their convention, uh, prostitution, goes, prostitution goes way up um, in those cities where that is. It absolutely is. So, um, so a pimp um, makes about 40,000 a week. So just in case you're very innocent and you don't know what a pimp does, a pimp is basically uh, the employer <laughs> who basically hires all the workers, right? Either male or female. Um, you know, the, the, the pimp, right, is not, as in any uh, worker, employer, employee relationship, the pimp is making more than he's paying out to the worker, right? Um, usually what's happening, right, in this case is you're not paying the prostitute directly, right? You're paying the pimp, right? Who then gives you the person that you know you're gonna have fun with, right? So, right, the right, the man or woman then that serves as a prostitute is getting, wow, well, this is maybe I, I don't really half, I don't know, four, three, four, right? They're making well, at least in the case of Atlanta, if the guy's making 40k, probably half or a quarter, right? Um there's obviously a lot of things going on in that relationship, right? The relationship between the prostitute and the pimp, and then the, I don't know why we call them the client, this, this is, well, the client and the prostitute, and the client and the pimp. Um, whole lot of illegal things going on, whole bunch of informal things going on, um, whole bunch of really screwed up stuff. Um, well, I say screwed up. I'm gonna pass the judgment. Um, okay. So let's look at this market. Um, obviously, I, I'm gonna say this obviously. Um, I think the workers are exploited. Uh, if you're like any workers in any place, the workers are probably exploited. Um, now, the demand is actually pretty stable, especially if we're talking about near military bases. Especially for your military bases, uh, the demand is pretty stable. Um, so there's lots of consumers. Um, as in terms of the job, it's high pay for the male or female that's serving as a prostitute, right? Compared to the alternative activities, it's a pretty high paying job. <laughs> uh, it doesn't require a lot of, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, I'm not, it's low skill, which I guess is probably true, right? I mean, um, depending on what you're asking for, right? Probably low skill, uh, but then it's also labor intensive. <laughs> I guess again, I, I'm just reading, <laughs> let your mind wander where it wants to. Uh, no, this is not a video. Uh, what's, <laughs> Yeah, no, I can I can send you this thing that I was reading here. Absolutely. Just reading what uh. <laughs> uh so it's actually not a video. So this is a uh, study that the uh, Urban Institute did, which is a uh, pretty good. Um, so these were two economists that did this study. So. So look at this. So so look at this. So these are part. This is part of it here. Um, 
primarily through cash, just as we kind of said here. Um, <laughs> drugs and merchandise, but basically most of this sort. There's this. I don't know. Again, I don't know how you. I mean, if you're square. a pimp, like, how do you accept credit or debit cards? I guess. See, that's the only thing I can think of is like square. square. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You good uh, So here's Atlanta. <laughs> right. So here's Atlanta. Big, the, the biggest part. Um, uh, the drugs are used to pay for. Um, that are being used to pay for the service. Um, yeah, the drugs went up, but. I mean, the biggest thing here again is that in terms of how big is the value of that industry, in this case of the, of the city they looked at, Atlanta was the biggest. Um, oh, value of Seattle is growing quite a bit. Um, oh, it could be. Yeah, you're right. No, it could be. No, that's actually an excellent way you could probably do it, right? You could be like, oh, she's $100. Okay, let me just give you a $100. Target gift card, and you know, I don't know. Um, no, but here's the thing. So, like, I mean, I again, I saw some of these things are just. I mean, I'm a guy. I like sports a lot. I mean, look at that. Commercial sex economy. So this is about 12 years ago. Two and a half times bigger than the entire payroll for the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> I mean, that's like this is not a small thing here. Um, <laughs> so. And, so the interesting thing then about Denver again was this idea that um, I'm not sure if it was in this article here. So this is all called the hustle. Um, that's a, the um, it's all from the Urban Institute. But um, apparently, when you go to New York City, this is where you can meet prostitutes pretty easily. Um, you know, why, why um, in front of him, though? Where you have to what? Why in front of that specific statue? Look at this though. They actually did a study of employee management. How do you as the pimp uh I mean, because this is the interesting thing, right? I mean I mean this has got to be I, as an interesting they wrote us. Right, exactly. So right, so how do you do this? I mean, I like the business challenges present, right? Like let's say I'm doing something illegal, right? And this is a pretty nasty illegal thing to be doing here right but yeah i'm not passing but you do what you want They're right but this is pretty this is pretty <laughs> this is pretty extreme right but the question still is is dude you still have to manage your employees even if you're the pimp right i mean i'm sure pimps have a good time doing their job right i mean they probably got a fun job but most of the time right i mean they probably have to do other things right like Communicate oh, yeah. with your competitors, right? So obviously, if I just told you 40k a week is what you can make as a pimp in Atlanta, at least one of you is thinking that might be the career for me, right? Right? Because what do economists know? Economists know that if there's outside profits in an industry, it's going to gather a lot of people who want to make money. That's the whole idea of imperfect comp, right? In this case, of more perfect competition, right? You don't have a monopoly, right? Unless I say that my prostitutes have these specific features and the other ones don't, mine are going to be just like cashes, right? So then the question is, how do cash and I then, right? Oh, I'm picking the two of us here. Oh. But right, <laughs> how do we manage our employees, right? I mean, because, you right, the one side of it is he wants <laughs> my employees, I want his employees, right? Like the good ones, right? And the other side is, how do I like? How do I pay them? Right? Are they going to work commission? Am I going to pay them on a daily basis? Um, do I want them to be part owners of my entity? I mean, think of the the challenges that have to come up with this. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, so, in this case, they have rules with. So this doesn't make this doesn't sound too odd here, right? Is that then the pimps then they have to create basically an HR manual, which is what this is saying. And in that HR manual, it's saying, you know, don't be talking to others, right? Uh, talk about what kind of clients we're going to allow, right? Do we want to be upscale and only guys in suits? Do we want to be the military one, right? Like, what are we going to do? Uh, don't do meth while you're on the job. And then, right, you must have to do a certain number of days. In some sense, right? I mean, forget what this industry is, right? Think about whatever job you do, or in my case, think about what job I do, right? 
Um, if, right, I have to teach a certain number of classes a day. I can't smoke or drink on campus. Um, clientele, uh, if I, I don't have that many. I guess, yeah, I can only teach people that are actually registered students technically. So I guess that's my limit for clientele. Um, I'm actually not allowed to teach anywhere at the same time that I'm teaching here at the UH. So I guess UH is like a pimp, I guess. <laughs> um, oh. But I mean, that from the film. The, one, the reason why I give you that kind of example, though, is what becomes interesting about that, right, is what I think is interesting about this is the way that we deal with things in the formal market, those practices and traditions filter over to this. So the, interest, the conversation I had with Ty, and again, I don't have that many conversations with him, but I was really interested then in how do you, and this might be interesting to you, is how do you, like what accounting standards do you use? How do you uh, capture the value of your inventory? How do you, like, you know, what do you, like, do you write, do you do LIFO, FIFO? Like, how do you do, right? I mean, all the things that from an accounting perspective and a finance perspective that are interesting to me, just to deal with all that same stuff that a normal business has to do, except it's even complicated more, but by the fact that he's an entirely cash-based industry. So before we just start thinking, wow, it must be really nice and easy to be a pimp, like just think of the complications and in some sense, how it may not be any different than the other side of the market, which then also means. Well, I'm gonna assume they don't have to pay for tax, so like that's they don't exactly. have to worry so about there's, that. there's that part of it, right? But on the other hand, you have to pay I'm sure you have to pay off some cops or someone to say don't hassle me and my employees, right? Right. So if you're not paying a tax, you're paying it in some other way, I'm sure. Um, and even if you don't, then you just have to pay for a lot of security. But the reason why I think this is the reason why I'm going on and on about this is going going back to the idea that in an illegal market, it's all culturally determined. So we're making this sound like okay, right? So if this was a class in the Netherlands or in Nevada, this might not be that interesting, right? I'm sure it's not. But what if we were having this conversation 100 years ago, or 90 years ago, when alcohol was illegal, right? I mean, uh, right? It's really no different. And yeah, <laughs> you know, for the most part, um, using alcohol is pretty much tolerated as long as you're 21. Um, but let's just think back. In the 70s and early 80s, it was 18, right? So why 18 and now 21, right? Or why 90 years ago was it illegal, but now it's legal? Maybe 100 years from now, this, right? All of this will be legal. Um, but what's interesting about this, and again, going back to the black markets and the legal markets, is why? What's so bad about it, right? I mean. Again, we can think of, I don't, I don't think everyone should be allowed to do everything. It would just be chaos, but other reasons. You should look up a shark eat a pimp. He's this juiced up like Australian guy that pimps in Thailand. Like this guy is like Jack. What's his name? Sharky. On this topic, why not? Sharky the pimp. Sharky the pimp. It's like at the top of that because they don't actually pay them money, they just buy them things. Like they create a dependence. Like he walks oh, that makes sense. Wow, look at that guy. Oh, the pimp confession. That's, that's a good This one. guy? Yeah. Holy wow. I think he has like a Louis V panic attack when he walks around Bangkok. Oh, I'm sure he does. He seems like the perfect guy that would. Um, is that his employee? His employee. And like, he's like, he talks a lot about how he he likes dogs. Um, man, that guy looks Jeez. intense. Nope, there he is. Jeez, okay, well, okay, I'm not going to keep looking now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> the left hand picture. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, You asked for a cash. You don't ask. Um, no, but I mean, but what I'm saying here is that, okay, I got to get off. Yeah, you <laughs> can't teach it. Usually, I wouldn't even care, but oh, the friendly motor in. No, oh, that's oh, nice. Oh, that that's guy hiding in the store. What's that guy doing? <laughs> Probably up to no good. Oh, look at that. That's what the pricing structure is. Hmm. By act, by date, by time increment. Huh. 
Does it mean by date? It says range from 15 to. Oh, so they're using like if I want one on like a Friday or Saturday, it's more expensive versus a Wednesday? Or like, what does that mean? I'm not trying to be innocent with it, but I really don't know what that means. Uh, I'm sure it tells me. Okay, it's just fine. Um, the time increment. Um, see, I mean, advertise Okay, so let's look at this here. All right, okay, so right again, I'm not. Oh my god. So this was okay. So Tuesday was when I started writing this lecture. Yesterday was then when I started getting deeper into this and thinking, you know what? I mean, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't suggest anyone I know get into prostitution or printing. But at the same time, what I just loved about this was look at all the things that any business expenses out and then deducts on their taxes. <laughs> if the pimp could do that, if his activity, him or her, I think, right? Him or her as the pimp could just deduct these business expenses. What's the difference, right? I mean, what's the difference between this and like a big bad bank that does really bad things, right? I mean, you might even think that they're like a pimp, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Like, how's the Bank of Hawaii any different, right? So if you look at the expenses, I mean, look at that. legal expenses, cell phones, hotels, motels, advertising, recruiting, <laughs> drivers and security, sketchier one financial investment and management. What? That's laundering. Yeah, like, that's exactly. Laundering. That's laundering. Exactly. Exactly. Um, More laundering. <laughs> so yeah. Um, such interesting. So look at the pricing. That's so interesting. So how much does it cost for 15 minutes versus 30 minutes versus 60 minutes? What's interesting about this is there's one for a thousand. So it's yeah, but right, you don't know what he or she is doing. Um, <laughs> but what's interesting about this, right, is that you actually do have some pretty good, um, you actually have some pretty good, right? So this must, ah, so this is interesting. Why does San Diego have so much? <laughs> Maybe Comic-Con. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because they're trafficking, right? What? Because they're trafficking from Mexico, most, most likely. No, what, what, where, I mean, you can't just have supply. What's the demand? Oh, exactly, no, right? Uh, the Navy. Um, right, um, that's driving all the demand here, and you're actually seeing right actually a lot of price competition here. Um, where you see a little bit more, sep oh, dude, no one wants to do it in Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that means in Atlanta, it's a monopoly because there's like a thousand dollars right there. No, but this is just one, this is one DC price three. listed. What does not recorded mean? So that would mean that then the Convicted pimp that was doing the study didn't want to say. Um, I really want what is this by date? No, there's nothing to click. Um, you can you just like if you want a squirt. bottom girl who runs everything when you're out of town, knows how to do everything a pimp do. What? <laughs> right ah, so what is that? Oh you know what that is, right? The assistant manager, supervisor. yeah, it's supervisor, shift leader. Yeah, um, again, look at this. Right, I mean, look at the tasks, right? Read that paragraph I just highlighted right there. Again, this is where I started to feel better about the world, is that all the things that- Making doctor's appointments. Exactly, all the things, right? That would be like employee healthcare, right? Um, <laughs> keep them in line, exactly. Um, so that would be like a scapegoat, like- Yeah, exactly, that would be the other side of it too, yep. Help mar employees and managers turn a blind eye, Gives right help market services give discounts tip off pimps right and in return they either get money or you know smuggle bucks. Yeah, smuggle like left, bucks. left to right the, 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 in the hotels. Yeah. See. So, but okay. So, but again, what is so interesting about this from my perspective is that despite the loftiness that some of you may feel about accounting degrees and finance degrees and business degrees. You don't have to use it for just like noble purposes. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not trying to say you should get into this business, but what's interesting about it again, it's just the passage of time, right? 50 years from now, 100 years from now, all of this could be um, not as bad as it used to be. Okay.
Let's talk about, okay, I'm, I've done enough about prostitution. Let's talk about drugs. So drugs. Um, so, oh, I should have mentioned this too. So the other ones, the other more innocent ones would be um, copyrighted materials, right? Like, so if I said to you, I, I copied a DVD for you, obviously that's illegal, but someone goes to jail for copying DVDs. Piracy. Um, Body organs, right? You could be rich and need a heart. I'm sure you could buy a heart from somebody even if it's illegal in the US. Um, so apparently, what's a really big good right now in the black market is timber, right? So I could go to like a national park where I'm not supposed to be cutting down trees. And a lot of people go out into the forest to cut down the trees and no one knows because it's like a big forest. Then they truck it out and then they sell it. Um, raw milk. So apparently, milk. No, can only be pasteurized, but some people think that the pasteurization is less healthy or less pure, and so they want to get they want to drink raw milk. It sounds like some anti vax shit. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah that probably is. Oh. Um, oh, this is a cool one. Uh, so this one I have actually seen in action. Um, this market. This is cool. Is it cooler than the pig market? <laughs> probably not. Oh, oh no. Anti tax states. So. Obviously, every state taxes their cigarettes differently, um, but I haven't. I don't know what this is. Here. Okay, so I used to live in Missouri. I used to live in St. Louis. So they charge almost the least per pack, uh, 17 cents a pack. Yet on the other side of the border is Illinois. Illinois charges a dollar 98 in tax for the exact same pack of cigarettes. So what do you imagine most people do? Drive to Missouri. Drive to Missouri, or you buy it from someone who drove to Missouri and then is selling you the cigarettes from their car. So, state tax, um, what is it, cigarettes? So, I used to, when I would drive from St. Louis to where my wife then lived when she lived in Chicago for a little bit, I'm gonna click on images, it could be offensive. Okay. <laughs> Cigarette bootlegging. There was this like sign as soon as you entered Illinois that basically said, dude, what you're doing is illegal. Um, and they, I, I mean, they would occasionally like try to like pull over cars that they thought was right. Cause obviously you'd have to go to Costco and say, I want 50 cartons of cigarettes, right? And they'd be like, okay. <laughs> um, right. So, um, so apparently that was, ooh, what's, what was the tax in, did anyone look at what it was in Hawaii? Uh, 320. Oh, yeah, six. So what's oh, first, New York? Who's first? Got to be, uh, no, 435. Oh, yeah. Second is Damn. 450 a pack. Jeez. And this is from what year? Oh, it's from this year. Okay, so it's still, wow. Oh, look at Puerto Rico. Though. Puerto Rico's charging 510. They're just not even listed because it's not counting it. Damn. I kind of pass. So the classic ones would also be North Virginia, or sorry, North Virginia, North Carolina and Virginia. So North Carolina, 45 cents versus Virginia, uh, 30 cents versus South Carolina, which I think was even like 57 cents. But the thing is, is that again, you can get states where they're like, one is really low, one is really high and they border each other. We would have to suspect, even in this case, this one's really easy. New Jersey, 270, again, versus New York, 435. All you have to do is take the right the train to cross into Jersey, right? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Buck 33. Yeah. Versus Washington is like three, three and two and a half cents. Um, <laughs> All right. Three, three. So that one's a lot. Uh, another one was uh, diesel fuel. So apparently, if I buy diesel fuel for my agricultural tractor, I don't have to pay a tax. But obviously, I can use that same diesel fuel in my truck. Uh, so they dye it a special color to stop you from doing it. But apparently, people still do it. What does the dye do? Like, uh, the dye is a way then that they could, then you could get pulled over and they'd say, "Dude, uh, did you pay taxes on this diesel you're running in your truck?" And they're like, yeah. And then they look in the tank and they see it's like all red because oh. they dye the fuel red to say, Dude, that, that you didn't pay your tax. Yeah. Or um, so apparently it has to be, if you buy untaxed, if you buy untaxed diesel, it has to be dyed a special color to, 
to get that tax benefit. Wait, so it's, no, it's oh, died okay. for you when you buy it. So uh, having lived in Wisconsin, um, the place where you would go if you needed to get um, gasoline for your agricultural vehicle um, was Senex. Um, not that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, Senex Farms Supply Company? Mm, yeah, this might be it. Maybe? Yeah. So they own gas stations, and you basically just have to go to a special one that sells that kind of gas. Um, I don't know. The people are, I don't know, what you would kind of think. They all wear plaid. They're all overweight. I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks like a regular gas station, but you need to be, no, they wouldn't Wait, be here. Doesn't there a dot in the middle of the ocean? Mm -hmm. Are there stores? Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or is it just saying where I am? No, no it's just saying. Mm. I'm guessing it's just showing me a ref I guess Google's uh, just telling me a refinery, I'm guessing. Uh I don't know, that's a good question though. Where would I get it in Hawaii? I mean, you gotta be able to get it somewhere, right? Mm. I know there's one in Kenya and Oh, it looks like this is, a, I guess this would make sense for Hawaii. It looks like what they do is you just report how many gallons you bought and then you get a tax credit for what you bought. Probably because there's such a low volume, I'm guessing, right? So then you would say, I'm Ma'o Farm, I bought 1,500 gallons of diesel, and then they would give you, I'm guessing. I think that would make sense. Um, okay, um, 6.30, the last thing I want to do here is uh, drugs. So let's do that. Um, Dude, it's a lot of money. A third of a trillion dollars annually is the estimate of what's going on. That's a lot. Considering that the economy is $19 trillion, a third of a trillion dollars is illegal drugs in some way, shape, or form. And that's only what the estimate is. Um, so stable source of demand, obviously, um, until the person dies. Um, the key risk, obviously, is prison for both the seller as well as the um, uh, person such so much so that uh, obviously more people are in prison for a drug offense, either using or selling um, than any other crime. Um, so, you know, again, that's kind of the, I mean, when we talk about all the bad things, I mean, especially if we're talking about like marijuana, yes, illegal, but I think we'd also know too, I mean, it's only gonna be probably another generation or two before in terms of like, marijuana where people can like use it, right? And not have to, I mean, it's just generationally it will change. Um, which would mean then that, right? I mean, we're seeing the steps towards which in terms of like medicinal purposes, recreational purposes. Um, then the other one would be is that in many states, I'm not sure if it's in Hawaii, but if you're convicted of like using it, it's either a misdemeanor or if it is a crime, right, and then they say you haven't been caught for another three years, then we'll take it off your record, right? Unlike like stabbing someone, right, which would be on my record forever, um, drug use is different then. Not that it's worse or better, but I mean, what is it, right? I mean, marijuana use in the 1960s, right? Like everyone was doing it from over here, right? Or even now, it seems like everyone's using it as opposed to, the 1980s, I guess everyone was using heroin and crack. I don't know. Um, but, right, but again, it's only a generational thing that what we once thought was illegal will become legal. It's just the natural evolution of things. Uh, maybe, I mean, it goes the other way too, right? We just, obviously, prostitution is illegal in all but Nevada. But, dude, right? Like, in the time of like um, Back to the Future 3, remember that movie? Right? I'm sure you could do it back in Back to the Future 3 time, like the 1800s, right? There wouldn't have been any laws against it. Um, I, should teach a, I should teach a class, where a history class, where it's based off of my two favorite history, three favorite history movies. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, right? National Treasure, if we want to do like colonial America and whatnot, and then the Back to the Future series. Uh, oh, and then if we want to do contemporary, we could do Hot Tub Time Machine. 
right? 1980s. Um, oh man, what I, this is why I don't teach history. <laughs> Oh, Forrest Gump, that would be good, yeah. What other history movies could we do? Tropic Thunder. <laughs> Tropic Thunder, right? That could be our time in Vietnam. Um, what else? I need one more. One more history movie. Spoof? Uh, it could be any of uh, What other history movie can we pick here? A Mel Gibson. It has to be a Mel Gibson movie. Oh, yeah, let's do that. That, that would work. Yeah, like The Patriot, the right? Patriot. <laughs> the Patriot. Okay, let's take a break now. It's 6.33. Let's take a break till 45 after, and then uh, we'll do the presentations, and then um, uh, I'll talk to you about the assignment that's coming up. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're going to do... Um, I might watch this. Um I kind of want to watch this on my own time. So apparently when people return stuff to stores, stores then sell it in bulk to someone else. You can buy it. like So you can buy, for instance, at Costco. Not at Costco, but you can buy like a truckload of stuff that got returned to Costco's. And it's going to be like mixed from like generators all the way to like Parmesan cheese, kind of like. You know the chickens at Costco? Yeah. Do you ever hear this yet? It's, it, you can eat the whole thing and or like you just eat like a little bit of it. Take it back and be like, I wasn't satisfied when you get too much back. See, well, it's, see, someone's taking advantage of the, well, yeah. Costco is like one of the best return policies. Like, you could buy something, use it for a year, and then you get it back. Yeah. Just before the, you know, whatever year is up, you can just return it for like a four week. See, but Amazon is pretty easy about, re at least for the, at least within 30 days, is pretty easy. So this guy, I'm looking here, so this guy must have did a return and he bought. Oh, I don't want to quit. Don't click it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just oh, wait. Move your mouse. Okay, just wait. Just wait. We'll There's just no fast forward it. it. And it was a scan. So basically, you can buy a pallet of return stuff. Okay, let's skip the ad. It's obviously British. Okay, let's. What do you buy? You got a what? It's a cage. It's going to be a celebrity video. Can you really buy that? No. Who's that? Who is that? That's the queen somewhere. It's the queen. It's hilarious. Okay, let's fast forward this. Oh, why you got Danny DeVito? Why is this? <laughs> what do you get? Oh, no. Apple TV. Now we got an Apple TV for the controller. Oh, okay. So you got, a, got some good stuff. Magic Cat. I wonder how much it costs now. Uh, probably this is in the beginning where you said how much you got it for. Let's see. So it was a bid. 2,700 year. Wait. Oh, okay, let's see. Oh, wow. Wait, you still got the banana hat. Marbles, 100 pieces. Marbles, the Avengers. There's a lot of videos you can watch of people doing this. Oh, and then he bought some luggage. No. Sorry. This guy? There was a TV show that was like this. Really? There was a reality TV show that was like, oh, you go to these luggage, lost luggage. Yeah. It followed like four people. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like the thing 
Wait, did, like, you get like someone's nasty underwear and shit in this, or? That's gross. Yeah. yeah. Do you really? Mom wants to do it. <laughs> oh, look, it's like a nighty or something. Oh, I'm sure they do. This guy does. So this guy's pretty popular doing it. I mean, it's, it's quite literally a video of someone airing it. Um, oh, what was that guy doing there? What was that? Is that what we think it is? Click it. Yeah. Ooh, nasty. Nail clippers. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I guess you need to wear gloves. Put a clothes in Isn't that what you want? What is it? What is it? Drill bit set? That would be kind of nice. It's like a drill bit set. Oh, hey. Uh, oh, got some sunglasses. Cool. Yeah, cool. I kind of want to do this. It'd be kind of fun. <laughs> Find the guy's like luggage though. Oh, you got a jacket. Look at that. Yeah. <gasps> Whoa! Oh my Holy God. fuck! Cash. Cash. You bought this money. <laughs> That would be like seventy five. Yeah, about seventy five hundred, eight thousand dollars. I would absolutely go through some nasty luggage. Straight in with an iPhone. Are you joking? Is it working? You can't. I'm gonna start buying your luggage and you lose it. I'm gonna come do this every week. What's that? Twenty four hour protection. Is that what you want? Coupon. Yeah. So we should start buying some luggage. Where can I get it? I mean, we got a camera that captures everything that happens in this room. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. Why is it for? Videos, yeah. yeah. Use it for YouTube purposes. Why not? While yeah. While well, mining my Bitcoin. Yeah. Don't bother me. Wait. Oh, oh, shoes? <laughs> More shoes. More shoes. Oh. Well, it's YouTube, so you know they, they find anything that's like, actually that's like really bad, yeah. Dude, this guy's rich. Eddie looks like he's having a good time. Um, okay. So, okay, so now we'll do the... Uh, no, uh, this is what Esther was using. Uh, Esther, you know, math. I can get rid of it. Um, unless one of you has a PowerPoint presentation first. Does anyone have a PowerPoint presentation? Or do you no, this? No, I would hope not. Uh, well, I mean, if you I do, I'm not, about it. I'm not stopping you from doing it. You would have gone overkill. Um, okay. Uh, whoever wants to go first can go first. Um, you would need to stand up in front of the class and do your whole thing. So it's like kind of an introduction. Introduction. Like um, you could spend a minute up there and just be like, hi, my name is so and so. I, you could do whatever you want. I hate my girlfriend. I work at a company job. You can do whatever you want. Take about a minute or two. Just crack you. I'm not even grading anything. But this is the lead up to the end of this ends poorly for everyone because that's just when I outline for you what the assignment is for next week. Now, if you know you're not going to be here next week, don't worry, we'll figure it out. But like, just giving everyone the week notice for the first and foremost week assignment for next week. Okay, go on. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jonathan Wynn. I'm a senior here at UH West Oahu. 
uh, I have a passion in history, but I'm an accounting major. I don't ask me how that happened. I actually tanked a semester of social sciences and then uh, doing okay in business. Uh, I really like it here. Born and raised here, and that's about it. You used to work at a gun range. I used to work at a gun range. That sounds exciting. I mean, that I used to work at a I, I used to sell guns, work at a gun range. Um, and one kid in class was like, oh, I know you from somewhere. And it was there. The gun range. And now I work at Bank of Hawaii. Uh, hey everybody, uh, my name is Daniel Wan, or you can call me Dan. Um, I was born in San Francisco. Uh, I moved down here like just before high school. Um, went to uh, uh, Kaneki High, uh, graduated from there. Um, I'm currently a, a senior here. I'm last semester graduating as a county major. Um, I had previously uh, graduated from um, Kamiki High School with an associate's in accounting. Uh, and I, you know, actually didn't even plan on, on coming to school or anything. I was like going straight into the workforce and like um, I got a job at Island Air. Uh, and oh, I went on a business, right? I worked there for two years. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, unfortunately last year, or actually like, you know, a year and a half ago oh, at yeah. this point. They went out of business, so it's like, oh man, well, you know, what am I gonna do? It's like, okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll go back to school, get my, you know, bachelor's degree. So, you know, that's what I'm here for. Interesting. So now, where do you work in town? Do you work in town? Yeah, right? yeah, I'm at a a, um, a trucking company mm -hmm. called Pacific Transfer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually working there part time. Uh, what do they do like all the mats and kind of like shipping yeah, containers? Yeah, they do do shipping. Like, when we got the one that. We moved all our stuff on a container to the island. They loaded it on right to the transfer and drove for Yeah, I mean, yeah, they do like um, they do shipping like uh, they'll do like freight for companies mm -hmm. uh, like Walmart or like Longs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they'll also move like people's like household goods and stuff like that. Uh, and like you know, they do all kinds of stuff. So, uh, uh, are the accounting principles so for most of you who are accounting students? Are the accounting principles that you use at Island Air are the techniques you're using any different than they were at Island Air than they are at Civil Transfer? I mean, uh, I mean they're both accrual based accounting, but I think actually um, uh, Island Air used to be um, uh, the the other one, the like um, by date or mm -hmm. you know um, non accrual based. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was like interesting. I had to do like a, a project to like reconcile one of their accounts, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, back when they used to do cash based accounting, yeah. it was like, uh, it was like, uh, it was fine. I mean, their their stuff isn't that complicated, so uh, it, it was okay. But, um, but I mean, yeah, Island Air was like, you know, it was like, um, I don't know, it was easier though too, right? Because it wasn't publicly listed; it was all owned by like Ellison. Yeah. Like, I mean, for me, I'm like doing a specific thing. I'm doing more like uh, reconciling accounts, bank reconciliations. I'm doing journal entries and stuff like that. So it's mm -hmm. like, I mean, I'm, I was didn't have that, you know, I wasn't that like looking at the long, like the big picture or anything sure. like that. I'm just doing, you know, my part. But are you gonna stay there after graduation? No, I mean, I'm looking to like, uh, you know, maybe, you know, get like a state job or something. Try to try and get something steady, get something yeah. like you know, long term that I can retire at. Stay jobs are pretty stable. Yeah, so it's like you know, <laughs> just did a lecture on constitution and probably still be retired. Um, so I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just like there now, just to get me through school, and then sure. we'll see how it goes. Okay. Questions or anything? So I'll say that generally too. I should have said that to him as well. Questions or anything? Give me a conference. Okay. And this is also typically the way it'll work there. I probably will do interruptions of when you're talking, like when I'm curious about something. Uh, just to kind of put you on your feet as well.
No, the white one is that what you're No, no. Who do you want to go next? How about that? Is there someone you want to go next? Don't give me that hug. No, <laughs> Someone go next. This is really easy. Really easy. Yeah, this is going to be the easiest. This is the easiest lecture by far. Okay. Oh, that's good. Thank you so much. Final message is pretty easy. <laughs> All right. Um, I just don't feel like good today. Um, you but feeling good or not feeling good? Not feeling that great. No. No. Um, yeah. So my name is William Loft the third. Uh, my dad goes to school here too. Uh, Are you kidding me? No. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I had no idea. I've been making all these jokes about your father for an entire semester. Really? And you never said I think anything. I might have had your dad last semester. Yeah, he's, a, he's like a bigger black guy. That, yep. Yeah, I had him in the class last semester. Talked a lot in class. I have no idea. You should, take him, you should have him enroll in this class. Yeah, no, he's, exactly. a, he's almost done. He's yeah, actually passed yeah. me in school. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Go okay. on. Go on. Um, so, uh, I'm Alaskan native. Uh, Clinkett and Haida are my clans. Um, I actually did three internships with our regional corporation in Sikaskalski, Alaska. Um, I plan to go and work there. I'm actually going to intern again, even though I feel like I've done it too much. Um, other than that, I don't know, I play games. Uh, I'm a senior here. My major is business management. Um, uh, <laughs> Isn't there a construction management firm that's Based out of Alaska, like native owned, that's making a big operation down here in Hawaii. Uh, yeah. Um, What's it called? Uh, it's called uh, Nana. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, our, our company is more like we just cut trees in Alaska and then we invested in other companies. So, we're not doing that great right now. But I own shares in that company. Um, Wait, why not? Is it because lumber prices are down? No, because we clear cut a lot of what we had. So um, that means we didn't plant the trees again, which means that our profit is very low. But we have a, it's like a system. There's 12 mm -hmm. regions in Alaska. Um, mm -hmm. Each one of them, if they take resources from the land, then they have to put into a pot called 7J. Mm -hmm. um, uh, everybody gets, like it all gets divvied out depending on how many shareholders you have. And mm -hmm. we have the largest. So because everybody else is doing good with their minerals, uh, we still do okay. Interesting. Yeah. That's really cool because, right, that's taking from like classic then like both Native Hawaiian, Native Alaskan notions of like communal ownership, right? And then. Yeah, no, but I can't get rid of my shares. Like, I can't sell it to anybody that's not a native. Oh, really? Yeah. You get it, and you got them by birthright, correct? Yes, but actually, um, I'm not enough. I'm one eighth, so I got them from my grandfather. I either have to wait oh. for somebody to die or somebody has to give them to me. Gotcha. So I have 10, which gives me roughly like $180 twice a year, um, which Pretty is sweet. Yeah, which is a lot, but yeah. the average is 100, so it should be way up there. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, wait, so what's the accounting principles that they use for something like that? Like, what would they use for like? So, right, so it's all royalties based for the most part, right? right? Royalties and then mineral purchase, mineral sales, timber sales. Mm -hmm. So timber, minerals, what else is being sold? Oil, right? Yeah, but we, um, the Alaskans are cut out of that deal. So mm -hmm. the, the state gets all that. Yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. That's why then every Alaskan, not native Alaskan, but every Alaskan. It's the right, right, right. And then we got we got corporations and mm -hmm. big money payouts um, because they fought really hard. So our corporation started with a billion, mm -hmm. and then about two percent of our original land base. So that's still over one hundred fifty thousand acres. Right. And if any of you think that's a shitty deal, it's better when they have one of got which is nothing. So you know, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, they actually talked to Native Hawaiians, and they said that. It should be pushed forward, but Native Hawaiians want more than what is offered. Well, it's hard, right? Because Native Hawaiians are the only group then that are not federally recognized, right? right. So, uh, and then in relation to this class topic today, uh, I actually <laughs> do have a <laughs> a, a marijuana card. Uh, I have sciatica, that's why. Yeah. So sometimes oh, okay. my spine really like. So where do you have to go for that? Where do you go on Isle of Wight? Uh, what do you mean to get the stuff? Yeah, to get it. Mm, or do you I, need to? Yeah, no, I just. From friends. So just for possession that you can have it and no one will hassle you. Mm -hmm. Like what would the so if a cop were to like search a person, 
is there any way to identify that you bought it legit, or is it kind of like, yeah, you got your car, it doesn't matter how you got it, it's just that you can match? No, I'm not really supposed to be with it out and about. Um, I can have four plants at home, which I don't, because mm -hmm. that'd be rude to my neighbors. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, I'm so only. So the card allows you to possess, the card allows you to grow, mm -hmm. and the card doesn't let you do any to possess, to grow, and to buy from the specific dispenser. Mm -hmm. And I can sell the plants if I were to grow them, but I'd have to. Who do you sell them to? Anyone? <laughs> to people with cards. No or, other cards. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's got to be a pretty. I wonder how they got that clause added to it. Yeah. Was it a pretty um, rigorous process to get your green card? No, it's kind of weird. Like, my doctor said, meet me at Comic Con at Lee. So we sat down and. You <laughs> <laughs> don't think it sounds a little shaky. <laughs> no, I, I just got a form and gave him 160 bucks. He was my real doctor, so oh. like, I couldn't, like. I wasn't like just meeting a random doctor. Here was but see, that. so then there's the, uh, I guess we call this unrecorded or probably unreported aspect, which is the W go through HMSA, the time, obviously. Uh, it's cash transaction, right? No. What do you get for sharing that form? We learned a lot. Oh. Any questions? <laughs> and Wynn's got a question. He's just waiting to ask. Oh, no, I'm just <laughs> curious. Oh, no, my question was answered. <laughs> Any questions from anyone? Who's next? Who's next? Uh, don't worry, you don't have to top that. We've got a hero with super card. interesting stories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, go up, Cash. Okay, well, um, my name's Cash. I was born and raised here in Milwaukee. Uh, graduated Milwaukee High School. Um, I played basketball and tennis before back in high school. And um, I mean, I'm, I came here because I moved to Eva. Um, I moved my, my junior year, I think. So, when was that? Uh, junior year of high school? Yeah. I don't even remember. So, anyway, um, I Probably came here because it's close, it's close to West Wally, so it's like 15 minutes away or something. Um, I'm majoring in finance and economics with a certificate in nursing management and insurance. I hope to be in an insurance firm after I graduate, preferably in the underwriting department. Where the money is. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then that's basically it about me. You did play a lot of tennis. Any questions, anyone? There we go, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> it has a good reference. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, it's really oh cool. man. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, you don't find something you can sell. Um, so, it's nighttime. <laughs> okay. uh, hello, my name is Jacob. Um, Jacob, Jake, go by. Um, I'm actually double major in Chinese economics, mm -hmm. um, right. as well as the sustainable food community system that um, Albie Miles does. But I pretty much say I'm majoring in dirt. So. <laughs> um, I'm a junior here, so I have two more semesters after this one, hopefully. If they don't pick up a third major. <laughs> um, what do I do? I pretty much live at this campus. Honestly, I'm um, taking seven classes, work on campus, and involved in two and a half, I guess you could say, organizations that put on events here at campus. And one of them's tonight, maybe night, which one's on campus. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so after here, there's food and popcorn. Oh, and, and then there's some like crazy. Rich yep, that's also on a Thursday, though. So it's a what? It's a Thursday. So. The Black Panther one is tonight. The movie started it like when we had our break, oh, six thirty. Yeah. But then yeah. Crazy Rich Asians, if you maybe wanted to cut class early, I know we'll show it once, oh. so we can make the second one. Wait, when's that? Is that next Thursday? February twenty eighth. Oh, okay. So it's like at the end of. Wait, who's seen it in this class? 
I don't know. It's a good movie. It's a really good I've seen it. No, my wife made me see it. It's a really good movie. So. Okay, remind me when that comes up. We'll go watch it for the class. I can finish my stuff by the We can tie it to economics. Yeah, we'll find a way to do it. How much do how much do weddings cost? Like, okay, don't about the black pants. Why Singapore so friggin' rich? Yeah, I would have talked less about my illegal topics. What about Ricky? I mean, like, and I haven't seen it. I know the uh, theory of the movie, but I watched it four times. I had to watch it earlier today to make sure that it worked. So I've seen it more <laughs> than I've cared to. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, we did it just kind of to like kick off um, Black History Month. It's um, February. So between that, Chinese New Year's next. Is there a movie for next year? There's not. We only do. We're only doing two this semester, but we've done like two or three. Each so semester. both of them are going to be ones now, and then one that's February twenty eighth, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why can't we do any more? Because yeah, Chris Day is oh, I want to see this. I want to see this movie with that kid that got in jail. That was really funny. I'm probably not going to get a lot to see that, but I mean, come on, see. okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Uh, I mean, based on your majors, it's like I'm just kind of wondering. Oh, well, what what are you looking in the future? What, what do you um, want to do? Looking for the future, I guess mostly I got into the um, sustainable agriculture just because I have always been really outdoorsy and that was the closest one in the major to what I was looking for. And then just tying both of them together would be um, maybe running my own farm. Another thing that I've been thinking a lot about. Um, recently is how we can make organic produce roughly the same price as like the conventional farming style now. And I've been like thinking and like trying to get in a couple debates or not arguments, I guess debates is the word, but on how we can get to that position. And I'm thinking more competitive markets. Mm -hmm. So perfect competitions as well as maybe a slight change in supply so shifting the supply curve so then the prices will go down but then uh cost of production is still something that i have to keep in mind because you know um if you like, organic, like disease and everything that kills off the plants more likely to not be healthy or no but so like the cost of production just like to be able to pay your workers so if there's this idea that like organic food is higher price and if they like are just labeling as a higher price just because of this little extra work, then like that's one thing and they may be able to bring the price down. But if it's like the cost of producing it is actually like that way, they can't go any uh, lower. So this is an economy of scale issue, mm -hmm. right? So like big factory farms can yep. make, even if they, because right, nothing stops a factory farm from making it organic, right? I mean, yeah, but then, safely I'm sure growers. But it's what's cheapest for them, right? But yeah. then, also, they're in a position right now where it's an oligopoly or more oligopolistic. Mm -hmm. But by having more organic farmers go into it, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that it'll get closer to a perfect competition, which will kind of set the price. So, no matter what it will be, organic or conventional, mm -hmm. you know, one may be able to produce, produce a lot more, but it'll be the same price. So, people won't necessarily feel as bad buying the more produced things. Mm -hmm. They won't. You see what I'm going with. No, I do really want to. So that's one thing I've kind of just been <laughs> toying with that idea of how we can actually get to that point <laughs> economically. Another question. Okay. Who's next? Hello, my name is Christiane. Um, I'm currently a sophomore here. My major is also accounting. That's why we're here. Um, I'm from White Coffee. Graduated from Otello High School. Um, Who was the mascot of White Coffee? Marauder. Mm. Yeah. Um, my favorite fruits are avocado, mangoes, and papaya. Um, I don't know. I just asked William Ben. He knew me. Yeah, I oh, think they're fruit. 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 Yeah. fruit. Oh, I guess, yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like tomato root. Oh, okay. I think it's just because it's like one of the seeds. You went to Universal Studios in Japan. I did. Right. I'm jelly. I missed it. <laughs> More so than 
Disney in Japan? Like a, I didn't see Disney in Japan. Disney is like in Tokyo. Okay. Oh, that's right. We had this conversation. Because you were in Osaka, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my favorite quote is if you can't find the sunshine, be the sunshine. Aww. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Any questions? Questions or concerns? Yeah. What are some things you guys could do? But that's why you need to know. <laughs> that's why you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> A fruit fairy? There's a berry to it in the theme. Oh, wait, why are strawberries called strawberries? They're fleshy receptacles. The seeds are the outside. I have no idea, but yeah. Oh, like a plum. I don't know if that's a berry. Hi guys, my name is Samantha. So I was born in the Philippines, but I came here when I was five because my parents wanted a better life, I guess. So I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> oh my major is accounting, but and I've been taking six classes every semester thinking that I was on track until I found out recently that I needed one fifty credits to take the CPA. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of all over the place now and I'm really nervous for the CPA. I don't think um like I'll pass, so I need to study hard for it. And then how many credits are you gonna wait? So you're gonna be the full 30 short or are you gonna start taking because you've been doing <coughs> you've been doing six classes every semester. Mm -hmm. So where how many credits are you at now? I am um, I think I have one more semester of like classes and then the intern. But yeah. then I need 30 more, so that's two more semesters. I think I'm on track, but that extra 30 kind of threw me off. Can you take, like, out? They could be in anything, right? I yeah. think so, yeah. So I'm thinking about double majoring. So maybe do, like, a whole bunch of, like, outreach things from, like, UH Manila, because they, like, maybe. show stuff online. Yeah, and I like online. Yeah. Online. I like to do, like, yoga or something. <laughs> Some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Think, Read, like, contemporary yeah. yeah, it's just, I was excited to, like, hurry up. Oh, I see what you're saying, because yeah. you thought you were going to get done sooner. Yeah, but now six. I'm like, I need 30 more. Which is, yeah, whole two, uh, two, two semesters. Two semesters, right, if I do six again, because it's AC. Yeah. Uh, my parents didn't, oh. You're going. Oh, my parents didn't want me to work. Because they wanted me to focus on school, that's why I have my business now. Yeah. And I consider that work. Yeah, I'd say, wait, so your parents don't consider that work? Oh, they do. Okay. But they're okay with it. Yeah, at first they were like, are you doing illegal stuff? And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm yeah. not. <laughs> no. Yeah, you should say, yeah, it's just uh, unreported, right? <laughs> well, I bought my taxes. Yeah, so it's not even that then. Yeah. Do you have an excise license? I need to. Okay, that's a good Safe space, everyone. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, to get the excise license, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, because then you can start deducting even more expenses. Mm -hmm. so last Although year now you came. can't. Yeah, last year it came. It was my first time filing last year, so it was like, whoa, like it was so overwhelming for me. Did you do a Schedule K? No. Oh, you should have done a Schedule K. I'm taking tax now, so hopefully I can get more knowledge <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should have taken that. Yeah. yeah. Are you legally, are you, do you have like, well, I guess once you get the excise tax, then you become a legal corporation. Yeah. Questions? Wait, where did you go to high school? Uh, Kapolei. Okay. But I lived in Nepali. Okay. Yeah, I went to Kapolei and then I recently moved to Ella. Is that a move up or down, or what is that? Well, I don't know, like, is it a move up? Like an upgrade? Yeah, because we lived in apartments. My parents needed a little time to yeah, save up some money. Yeah. And so we lived in apartments, and then our family started getting bigger. Yeah. So we needed to move into a house. So it sounds like a move Questions, concerns? Okay. Okay, uh, I'm Elijah Malul the fourth, 
This is probably going to be boring. Board. Oh, oh, oh. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Hoping that's the end. Okay. Um, I'm a psych major, but I was convinced by my econ parents, Dylan and Nick, to take a double concentration in economics. That's why I'm here. Easy to do, easy to do. Especially um, when you're in another social science, it's easy to pick up econ. Yeah, so that was kind of a no doubt moment. Um, I'm only a so Did I mention I'm a sophomore? I might have mentioned that already. Yeah. Where did you go to high school? I went to a fancy school called Meyer B. Thompson Academy. It's this. No, see, it sounds fancy. Yeah, it's the charter downtown, but right now it's like dirt poor right now. Oh, yeah. wait, is that the one where they said they might close down? Oh, please don't say that. <laughs> you don't go there anymore. So no, my <laughs> sister's still in there. Oh. Oh. Uh, maybe it was, but it was in the news for something, was it? It was in the news because apparently they were caught on nepotism to some extent. Oh, but nepotism. Nepotism. Well, it's a thing that we do in Hawaii where you hire Secret families. Is oh, oh yeah. Oh, wait, that too. We we're doing that too. Uh, we have a. We had. We apparently had a. Uh, what's it called? An AD athletics department, but we don't have teams or. A gym. Oh, so like a, like a fictitious job. Pretty much. So that nepotism case was because she was our athletics department director, but we don't have athletics. Yeah, it's like secretary. Uh, so that's the story. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Okay. So that's your corrupt high school. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm an econ. I can yeah, learn how to yeah. use it well. So wait. So you lived out here, but then you went to town every day. Uh. Only on certain days, so it's an online charter school, which oh, allowed me to oh, allowed me to stay nice. here. Uh, it helped at the time because my parents were both full time workers. Yeah. So it was a bit more on the difficult side to get to and from from places. How was that doing high school online? You, it's hard. So you don't. They look at make it look easy on TV. Well, those are the good kids. Oh. So what would happen if you had a question on homework? Uh, you email the teacher and hope that they answer it within three days. Yeah, or, yeah. or so, you Google, Google everything. Do you, because there's this one guy who lives in, so I live in UH Housing, there's this one guy in UH Housing who like used to teach in a school, like a public in-person school, and then now works for like one of these like online, and he says he has to like visit the students like once a year or once a semester or something at his, I guess. Uh, that's different. In our case, it was face-to-face uh, -face classes about once or twice a week. Okay. Or no, once or twice a month, so every other week. And we would basically come in for that one face to face. And other than that, we'd meet over like a Skype call or something where the professor would teach from the school building, but it'd be through a video service. So you'd all be at your house, and at let's say 9 30 a.m., you knew you had a history class. So at 9 30, you had to be on your computer at that time. If they, were, they had a scheduled class, you'd sign in and join the class session. And then after, yeah, and then at the end of the appointment, just leave. Uh, what they did for classwork is they just gave you a ton of classwork that was up to you to keep on. So you learn to be independent or good at Googling or good at Googling. Yeah. So when you would go to the in-person session, what would you do at the in-person session? It really depends on the type of class. So if it's an English class, you're basically doing the online thing that we always do, but just mm -hmm. now you're staring at them. Mm -hmm. The fun classes like physics or chemistry is when you actually get to like mess with stuff. So there's yeah. kind of a tangent. This one, my physics professor, he was teaching us the law of conserved motion yeah. and how energy changes. Sure. So what he did was he tied a uh, clothes iron to right. the roof yeah. Held it to his face and said, "How much you want to bet this is uh, this isn't going to hit his face?" And he let it go, and we all thought it was going to yeah. right into his nose. And that's how we learned. No, that's not how physics works. Oh, yeah, huh? Yeah, you can only do that then once every other week, then, huh? Pretty much. Huh? So would you do it again? Are you glad you did it that way, or it? How do you do prom? What's that? <laughs> See, exactly. that's that's my answer. We didn't. We had one, but I didn't want to go because it's in town. Oh, that sucks. No prom? No homecoming? We had a class of 30. There's like, and the, we were the biggest class at the time. Really? 30? Yeah. Yeah, so there's like, there's no, there's no How reason. long did you go to, like, was it just high school that that was, or? Yeah, my four years of high school. Prior to that, I was, um, in-person class. HTA. Yeah. Is that where you went? Uh, before my R&D, yeah. You went to HTA? 
Dude, I was in there with sixth grade. I was in there with Piontech. That's who it was. Yeah, the Wait, what's APA? Hawaiian Technology Academy. It's this other online school down in a little bit past my college. They moved it off. They did? Oh, oh shoot. Uh, I'm assuming they didn't have any eighth grade dances or anything. Like they, did, they did. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that was the big thing. Remember in high school? I mean, dances were the big. Yeah. That's, a, yeah, that's the only thing I remember from high school. Um, yeah, let's get the grade. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. As a school, it's pretty beneficial if you're like for college prep. Because I, you know, once I joined this system, I didn't I didn't freak out with yeah, logging yeah. or anything like that. Because you already did things online and everything. Pretty much. And then I was also used to being left to my own devices with assignments. I actually thought college is a little bit easier than online high school. There's wow, yeah. There's like, less you know, assignments. Yeah. Yeah. There's fewer assignments and you're given much more time. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say less busy work. Well, right? yeah. So instead of it's like a that's why I actually really hate online courses here. Yeah. Because discussion posts is like that's just busy work. It reminds me too much of high school. Let me tell you something about discussion posts. No, um, <laughs> I hate discussion posts, and I'm forced to do them. And like up to I, this semester, I didn't do them, and finally I got called out on it, and I had to do it. And I absolutely hate it. Now you have to read everyone else's thoughts. I don't read it. Oh, I good. Don't read it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no one told me. I mean, they said you have to do it, so I do it, and then they can say I do it. But I think it's really like. Christiane, who don't know who's in the class, writes, I think flowers are great. And now Cash has to send a reply. And like, I, agree. Like, I disagree. I disagree. Like I think flowers are conversation. Forced. It's all forced. And why would I want to read it? Um, Hi, good job. And have a good semester. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good semester. And then it comes for like, and then you have to give a grade for how am I supposed to grade that conversation? <laughs> Uh, okay, so any questions? Any questions? Okay. Yeah, man, you're up, man. <laughs> Although you can stand there too if you want to. We just all turn around too. If you yeah. want. Or you can stand up in front, whatever you want. I guess I'll just. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, my name is Ben Ramos. I am from Wyoming, the North Shore. Graduated from Wailua High Intermediate School. I have been in school since. Well, I stopped. So I graduated high school in 2011, and then I was in school until 2015. I got my associate's at Newbury. Before that, I was at NCC. I stayed in town for a couple, or a few, what is it called? A few, or once, you know, one semester. And then I went to New York to finish my associate there. And then I went to NOLA. Mm. One semester I stayed there. And it was hard because there was so much things to do. Mm -hmm. Like a lot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> like, are we talking like extracurricular activities or like, uh, or that there were too many classes to take or like, or the all the fun stuff of NOLA? It was mostly all the fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, so no, I know. Right I know. Next door. Yeah, yeah. They're telling you, they're knocking in. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, yo, uh, yeah. come outside. Uh, no, don't, yeah, do it, don't do it in class. Just sit in the next room and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, uh, so I finished. I got two jobs. I was in the food industry and I was also in a couple sectors where I was working at my local elementary school. Two jobs. And I told myself, you know, uh, it's not really good like to live. So I came back to school in 2017 as a business administration major. It was interesting, but I saw more value in economics. So that's why I'm right now as a BA. And as far as my journey goes, uh, if I were to say, oh, okay, I wanted to go to know how to get my MBA, it would kind of look weird only because uh, what I've learned is if you have a BA in economics, it's mostly for you to just go straight into the workforce. But if you have a BS in economics, it's more of a research thing. It's, just, uh, it's more, uh, you can translate that into a master's in economics. So right now, it's uh, that's where I am right now as far as in my career. Uh, mm -hmm. 
should I get an MBA? Should I even go to master or get my master's in something? So uh, that's mm -hmm. why uh, I took this class as well because uh, oh, yeah. So yeah, I'm wondering so if I if uh, LOI is uh, yeah. in my uh, yeah, for your combo, maybe I can ask you. No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> see, that's a little of the thing too, right? For at least for econ, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like everyone does something different. So some people are raised in the workforce, and some just do graduate school, some do MBA, and it's hard too because it's odd that econ is in social sciences because in other places it's in the business division, uh, one comes in the business division, and then at other schools it's in social sciences. In essence, it doesn't make a big difference because still all the graduates either go right into the business world or they do more econ and they do research. And, yeah. And the interesting thing about the NOAA's econ program is they have the master's in econ program, then they have the MBA, then they have, you could do the PhD in econ, um, or you could just end up looking for the state right away with a BA degree in econ. But in fact, it's so the tax office by the law firm. Questions or concerns? Okay. Uh, no one did anything weird, so you're all good. Um, okay. So uh, this will be the assignment. Uh, I'll have a, um, a thing created for next week's um, speech, but the idea is that we'll start the class with it. Um, I'll prepare a lecture still, but. Um, I'll try to underprepare because I want to give everyone enough time to do it. So here's the, um, I'll, again, there's a formal document I created. I will send that right as soon as I get downstairs. I'll post it. Um, I'll make it as an announcement, and then we'll all get an email with it like that. Um, but for this first one, what I want you to do is you can either work with one other person or not. doesn't matter. I originally designed it as you would do it yourself, but if you want to do it with someone else, more power to you. If you do do it with someone else, you'll probably want to have something closer to 10 minutes. If it's just going to be you, you're going to be doing about five to seven minutes. And what you're going to be doing then during that presentation, I'm not going to require it, but I would strongly encourage that you make a PowerPoint. Um, that way it kind of helps you organize all of your thoughts. It gives us all something visually to see. That so you would make a PowerPoint, you would either then um, it's nice to print it out for me. It makes my job a lot easier in terms of grading. But if you have a hard time, I don't want, I mean, I know, you know, everyone's got a different financial situation. And if, you know, printing is a big hardcore hassle, just email it to me and uh, we'll figure it out, right? I mean, I print it using your tuition dollars anyway. Um, so um, you print out your PowerPoint. That way you would give it to me, though. The benefit is that then I use that to write down my comments as you're doing the presentation. Uh, what is it that you're presenting about with either yourself or with a partner is um, I actually just want you to give you freedom. Just find something interesting that you want to talk about that is in some sense news of whatever. So uh, the example I was giving earlier was uh, the report came out today for like Aloha Stadium and the renovations. And basically you would take, let's say you were doing it by yourself. You would have five to seven minutes that for two minutes or so, you would be talking about what the story was talking about. Then for another minute or two, you'd be kind of expressing what maybe what some of the economic theories suggest or what other kind of experts say about whatever that event is. And then you would conclude it with giving your own thoughts. So those are the three salient elements that I'm gonna be looking for. Again, this is all articulated in the document, but it could be you find some article or some, it doesn't even have to be a news article, but it could be just some overall thing, right? So we were talking about like the other cryptocurrencies. You could be like, dude, China, you didn't talk anything about those coins. Like, I want you to, I want to talk about that. So you're basically like teaching us something, basically, for five to seven minutes, or again, up to 10 minutes if you're doing it with someone else. You're teaching us about something, you're adding your own viewpoints, you're just talking about it. Um, and then I will probably ask things of you for like a minute. Your ability to answer my questions is in no way any impact on your grade because my comments are unprepared and unscripted, which means that your reaction would be like, dude, I have no idea. And that's a totally fine response. It's just me learning something and 
you serving the role of the teacher in teaching us all something about the thing that you are doing. So, right, so like even like one thing of like teaching us about, um, right, how see Alaska and like the districts and, right, yeah, that would be a perfectly fine topic to talk about for five to seven minutes. Um, it really can be anything that's of interest to you, right? Talking about organic farming. Um, ooh, the big controversial issue for Hawaii, which would be um, organic and sustainable farms being able to provide their food to the school lunch system um, here in Hawaii, right? So I mean, all these kinds of things, right? Exactly. So if you have an opinion about something, it's generally easier to do this presentation because then the time will go a lot faster. Uh, but you could even, I don't know, talk about smuggling cigarettes across state borders and how you would actually do it. Um, I don't care what you do. You tell us about the sticker industry to explain the whole business uh, of what you do from one step to another. Basically, you're teaching us something. Um, that will be our first um, thing. And we'll do it in the same uh, structure as we did now, except it will be the start class, and then we'll just go to the last person who's done. And then whatever remaining time we have, I'll lecture. But I think if I do it correctly, I don't think we'll have actually a class in the last day. We need a lecture. So. Um, okay, go off to the world, and then I guess we'll watch Crazy Rich Asians uh, <laughs> February 28th, right? Is that this week, I'm making sure you have everything on your board. <laughs> Wait, so, so then there's a Econ 131 class is canceled. Uh, in the morning, yeah, yeah, but then I'm back here. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the principals, they get out of it. They don't have to be here, but all the rest of us do. Okay, so I'm going to send the document.